All right guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the hand tools that you need to carry with you in your tool bag when you're gonna go install standing seam metal roofing. What's up guys, my name's Aaron. We're here in our shop with Exterior Pro and I've got my tool bag on and I'm gonna show you the specific list of tools that I carry when I'm installing standing seam and it's also a list of tools that I, uh, that I have my guys carry when they're installing because I know if they've got these tools on them, they can do any task that I ask them to do. So let's jump right in. We're gonna start off with the 10 snips. All right guys, the 10 snips are a very important part of the job. We install a 24 gauge standing seam. Some of you guys are installing the nail fin panel, which is 26 gauge. Either way, you've gotta have a good pair of 10 snips to uh, cut, shape, and manipulate that material. So we carry a pair of offset rights and an offset lefts, and we are very partial to the brand Malco. I've, we've ran these snips for years. I run reds and greens, and, uh, and you, just, you just cannot go wrong with this. Also, you could run a pair of Midwest. I've got a pair of Midwest here. If your hands are a little bigger, I find that the spread of the jaws in the Midwest are a little big uh, for my hands, and uh, so, so either one of these snips are good, but the Malco is the one that we stick with. These snips will run you somewhere between 30 and 35 bucks a pair. You can pick these up at HVAC stores. Uh, sheet metal stores, AMSI Supply Online has this type of snips. It's the Max 2000 by Malco. That's a great snip that's gonna last several jobs. If you don't lose them, take care of them, and uh, they're not gonna fatigue your hands. Now, if you go to Lowe's or a box store, Home Depot, Menards and buy some cheap snips, man, you're gonna really struggle. I don't recommend that. Get you a good pair of 10 snips, save your hands. All right, next thing that uh, is a must-have on these standing seam jobs, you've got to have an impact. So we like Hilti. You can run whatever impact you like, but the, the important part is this hook, and I hook this impact right on my D-ring so that I can be hands-free when I'm working. I can stand here. I can do trims. I can set panels. I can dig in my tool bag. I can pick my drill back up. Uh, if, you, if you've never run Hilti, I really recommend them, but anything, a DeWalt, anything, just get you hooked so you can be hands-free. That's what we like. And then the bits that my guys are going to carry I want, I want four bits and then a drill bit. I want to explain these. We're going to shoot a clip screw. We stock clip screws from AMSI Spy for our standing seam jobs. So I've got a number two square head that fits our clip screws. We always carry a T25 wood screw. All right, I want them to carry a quarter inch drive nut driver and I want a 5 16 nut driver. And then the second thing that I really, that, that is basically a must have for us besides these four bits. So when they leave the shop in the morning, they better have these four bits in their pocket. But they also better have one of these chucks. We, we run these chucks and it allows us to, to uh, switch in and out from a bit to, uh, to, to drill an eighth inch uh, holes for our, for our rivet. So we pop that right in and then I buy, I buy these little double headed uh, drill bits. So I've got an eighth inch drill bit and it's got one on each side. This is the cheapest way to buy your eighth inch drill bits. So I think a bag of these at Harbor Freight is like $2.99. So I think you get, I bought these today, basically it's a seven piece. So basically you get 14 eighth inch drill bits for three bucks. You cannot beat that. You, you, you can't afford to not have these in your tool bag. And so these little chucks, I buy these at Menards for $4.99. So, I mean, that, that, that's, that's, just, that's just too cheap. So we pop that in, pop it into the chuck, tighten up our chuck. Now I'm ready to make eighth inch drill bits. So I need to have quarter, five sixteenths, number two square, and a T25 wood grip with a chuck and an eighth inch drill bit. All right guys, the next thing that we need to have in our tool bag to do standing seam is a rivet gun. Now, there's a lot of different types of rivet guns. There's cheap ones, there's expensive ones. There's ones at Lowe's, Menards for $19 and $29. I bought expensive ones for $80. And I don't think they're any better than the old $4.99 version at Harbor Freight. So I can afford good tools. Uh, I have no problem paying for money for good tools. I just have not found that the good ones outlast this anymore. And for $4.99, I bought one today just to show you for $4.99. If this thing breaks, I throw it in the garbage, I get another one. It's basically a consumable for me. If you think of the price of a saw blade for your skill saw, that's more than $4.99. That's consumable. Saws all blades cost basically more than $4.99. So we run these cheap rivet guns. I like them. They're cheap, they're easy. If they break, if the guts break in them, they pop, I throw them away. We tend to dip our rivets in the end of caulking and then set the rivets in there. So we, we, ended, up, we ended up jamming them full of caulking. And if it gets jammed up, we throw them in the trash. But that's a, it's a cheap and easy tool to carry. They're easy to find and buy. Harbor Freight's near $4.99. It's, uh, it's just a tool of the trade. We, we rivet all of our trims on and, uh, and it's, just, it's just what we gotta have in tool bag. All right, guys, the next thing that you need to have in your tool bag to do standing seam, you're gonna have to manipulate these pieces of metal. You're gonna have to bend things around as a pair of hand tongs. Now, again, 
I, I can run expensive hand tongs that are heavy and uh, weight me down. I've got some, uh, some nice specialty standing seam tools. Actually, I, I own a full sheet metal shop. I can afford them, but again, I go right back to Harbor Freight. I get a pair of hand tongs for $9.99. I bought this pair today just for this video for $9.99 Harbor Freight. It's too cheap to not carry them, man. If the jaws break on these things, I throw them away. Again, it's a consumable. These things will last me six months. Usually we lose them before they'll break. Every once in a while we'll crank on something and we'll break a jaw, throw it down, get another one. But why I like these is they're lightweight. So I squeeze it together, I drop it right in my tool bag, I pull them out, they're easy, they don't get hung. It's not some big weird, uh, a long try to I don't try to bend some great big long thing I take this is like a three inch uh, chuck right here or, or width on the mouth and I've get a two inch bend some of these ones uh, hand burners that you guys buy at the the box stores they're only an inch deep so it doesn't give me an inch is not enough when I'm making uh, custom bends around chimneys flashing skylights uh, setting uh, rake trim uh, making custom bins on these historic houses that we work on with standing seam. So I like a nice tall inch, two inch tall, and that's what I get out of these uh, for $9.99, man, you can't beat it. All of our guys carry the same brand, the same style, lightweight, easy to climb with, hand benders, do anything with them. And if I need to make a bend, if I need to turn a panel up longer than two inches, I'll go down on the ground and make that panel on the ground with a pair of Wukos. So those, when I'm up climbing, I can do anything I need to do with those hand benders. All right, guys, uh, we're getting towards the end of the video. Honorable mentions in here, tape, pencil, square, and knife. So, I mean, you should, if you're running any kind of uh, trade construction type work, tape, pencil, knife, those are must haves, but that's basically for anything you're doing. And then finally, I would say, if, if you're gonna get into serious sheet metal and be up and you're gonna be tied off and you're gonna need to be tied off, I would invest in a good harness. This is a Miller. We've ran these for several years. Uh, we buy them six and eight at a time. We all basically have the same type of harness. The reason I like these harnesses, they have padded straps. My pads have wore off on these straps. I actually ripped them off there. Uh, it's time for a new one. But these, pa these harnesses are very, uh, they're very comfortable. They're easy on, easy off, adjustable. And then all I do is I go to Lowe's or Menards and I get some of the big wide mouth bags and I just slip them onto the belt that already comes with this Miller harness. Now, probably the thing that I would say, run any harness that you want, just get a good one with front D-rings because if you're going to have to get tied off, I, I just does, to me it just doesn't make sense to try to hook into my back or, or to have a three-foot whip where I'm carrying around. That's, all that is extra weight to me and reaching over my back and hooking in to me doesn't make sense. I, when I'm working and I'm on a pitched roof and I'm climbing, I want to hook right in whether it's retractable or a rope, a land. I want to be hooked in right in the front and then th my, this front when I use it is like a holster for my for my drill. So I use these front D-rings almost, I, I won't even wear a harness that don't have front D-rings on it. So my suggestion, if you haven't ever tried to harness front D-rings, get that, get the rest of your tools together. As you can see, these tools are not that expensive. 35 bucks for this, 499 for this, 999 for this. Your, your eighth inch drill bits are cheap, guys. You can't afford not to be prepared. Hope you learned something. Hit that like or subscribe button, guys. We'll see you on the next one.